Thanks, Jordan. A spot in the Myrtle Beach Invitational final is on the line as we continue with Feast Week, presented by Lowe's on ESPN Networks. The West Virginia Mountaineers set to battle the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky in our second semifinal from the HTC Center on the campus of Coastal Carolina. The UCF Knights have already punched their ticket to Sunday's title game. Mountaineers took down Monmouth in their quarterfinal matchup. Western Kentucky took care of Valpo in the quarters to get here tonight against those Mountaineers. And with that, we welcome you inside a sold out HTC Center alongside Debbie Antonelli. I'm Rich Hollenberg. Deb, the Mountaineers and the Hilltoppers both have multiple weapons, but a pair of big men are in the spotlight. Well, this is the reason why you want to stick around and watch the game. We're going to watch a couple of guys do battle on the inside. One of the guys that you may know about, Sagaba Kanate, one of the top shot blockers in all of the country last year. He has the ability to protect on the defensive end. He's really worked on moving his feet defensively to be able to guard on the perimeter. He's added this to his game, his ability to step out and knock down triples. But we know he can ignite the defense and ignite a transition game with his defensive ability. And here's a guy maybe you don't know about yet, but you are going to know after tonight. At 6'11", Charles Bassey has a 7'3 wingspan, and he does a lot of the things that Sagaba Kanate can do. He defends on the inside, and these two teams have a DNA about extra possessions. Look at the number of free throws, Rich, that these two teams shot last night. Western Kentucky, 33 attempts. West Virginia went to the line 37 times. These are extra possessions. Their DNA is attack. Whoever wins these hustle categories tonight could determine the outcome of the game. Aggression is the key for Western Kentucky, as it is for the West Virginia Mountaineers. And speaking of the Mountaineers, there is the face and the heart and soul of the program. The future Hall of Famer, Bob Huggins, in his 12th season at his alma mater, 846 total head coaching wins means he's the third active winningest coach in all of college hoops, seventh all time. And Rick Stansbury, good friends with Bob Huggins. They've been friends for a long time. 17th season overall as a head coach in his third season in Bowling Green. He grew up right nearby in Battletown, Kentucky. So he has bluegrass roots, but he bleeds the red of Western Kentucky now. And he's got his Western Kentucky Hilltoppers off to a two and one start in this, in this season so far. They've got Lamonte Bearden missing the first nine games of action. He will be their starting point guard, but in their place, they've got point guard by committee, and they've got some size at that position as well. Deshaun Murray, also number 13 in red. He's a graduate transfer from Auburn, led the Tigers in rebounding a year ago. And for West Virginia, Beetle Bolden, number three in white, is going to be the head of Press Virginia this year, carrying on a long line of talented point guards for Bob Huggins. He's got to set the tone on both ends. He's got to manage the offense from the top of the floor. And West Virginia, you know, is going to bring 94 feet of pressure. They are going to get into West Virginia, or excuse me, Western Kentucky quickly. Let's see if their length is a factor. Your officials, Pat Adams, Ron Groover, Brett Smith. And the opening tip, score one for the freshman, Charles Bassey makes it Western Kentucky basketball. Josh. Anderson at the point, as you were mentioning, by committee for Western Kentucky at 6'6". He has the size to see over the top of the West Virginia defense. They try to feed it inside to Bassey. He couldn't handle it, and it's a Western Kentucky turnover. I think it's going to be important early for both teams to get early touches to the paint, especially for West Virginia to establish Kanate inside against the rookie Bassey. Here's Bolden, three and white. Issa Ahmad, leading scorer so far for the Mountaineers. There's Bolden with three on the shot clock. Way off the mark on a challenge shot, and Bassey has his first rebound and leads the transition. Knocked away by Ahmad. Bassey gets it back, and he's got the first two of the game. Charles Bassett sent a little message to Canate to let him know he's going to be hanging around. I might be inexperienced, but I've got some skills. 
And Sean Murray whistled for the foul on Bolden. How about some winning strategies for each team? First, Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky did a great job yesterday changing their defense, but they got a score to be able to do that, and they've got to have the ability to attack off the bounce. West Virginia has struggling containing dribble penetration. West Virginia details in passing. Their angles have to be better. Their passing has to be better, and they've got to establish the game from the rim out to the three-point line to have balance in their offense. Sags Kanate gets the touch. Now Bolden for three. Got it! Touch inside to Sags. Kick outside to set up the three. A much better opportunity to score for West Virginia. Bolden, the all-time leader in three-point percentage in West Virginia history. Gives his team a one-point lead in the early going. Here's Tavion Hollingsworth. Can't answer with the three of his own. We will see Hollingsworth in the scoring column early and often in this yeah. one. He will look to, to take some quick shots. He's got the green light, and he comes up with a big defensive play early. And what a terrific defensive play by Tavion Hollingsworth, but he makes his name on the offensive end. Last night, he ended up with 23, and his backcourt mate, Jared Savage, topped him by a bucket with 25. It's not just that they scored a combined 48 points. It's the efficiency with which they scored it at all three levels. Look at their ability to get to the free throw line. They are tough to check. They will really challenge the backcourt of West Virginia. Here's Hollingsworth, 11 in red. Forced that one, good defense by Bolden. Bolden gives it up to Ahmad and a chance at a three-point play. Well, I know this is only two minutes plus into the game, but this is a much different <laughs> Mountaineers offense. Look, Beetle Bolden told me the other day he wants to be the leader. Look at the emotion on his face after he makes this play. So he's already hit a three. Now Ahmad gets fed at the rim. And Bolden looks to the crowd and gives a serious Shout out to his teammates. Ahmad completes the three-point play. He had a season opening 15 against Buffalo, 16 last night in the win against Monmouth. See, I'm looking for that from West Virginia. I'm not sure I've seen that from anybody that wants to take ownership of playing the kind of pace and style that Bob Huggins demands for West Virginia. Western Kentucky handled West Virginia on that possession and West Virginia called for a foul on the floor, so Jared Savage, two in red, will trigger the inbounds from right next to Bob Huggins on his favorite stool that he's brought with him from Morgantown. Here comes Josh Anderson. A work in progress at the point. Good job by Harler not to get screened. Did a good job of getting over the top of both of those screens. Five on the shot clock. Hollingsworth and Pat Adams calls a foul on the floor. Well, you said something to me very interesting before this game tipped. You felt like the three officials were going to be key in oh, this game. Why is that? They're going to be challenged because neither one of these teams has anything in their mindset about backing off. They're going to crash the glass with three or four players each possession. They're going to make sure they D up. They're going to be in your grill every possession. Here's Bassey, shot fake, two-hand block by Kanate. My goodness. I love the emotional level that West Virginia started this game. What a terrific play by Kanate. Welcome to D1 basketball, yeah. <laughs> Charles Bassey. First block of the game for Kanate. That is his specialty. He was second in the nation a year ago in that category, and now he is just 14 shy of the all-time West Virginia blocks record. Last year, I watched every one of his 116 blocks on Synergy, and this is the breakdown. 57% of the shots he blocked were into their transition game. 29% opponents kept the other 14 he put in the fifth row. I like the 57%, Rich, because that really gets West Virginia on the run. We'll keep an eye on that tonight. As Issa Ahmad got it over the outstretched hands of Charles Bassey for his second bucket of the game. Lamont West snares the weak side rebound. And here comes Brandon Knapper, redshirt freshman out of West Virginia. Getting some early minutes at the point. We didn't see him till late in the second half yesterday. 
Well, this is a very deep West Virginia team, and Bob Huggins still trying to figure out who he can count on in this rotation. Five on the shot clock. Napper off the window. No. And Bassey has another rebound. Everything is going to be challenged. You're going to have to really move the ball in the quarter court to get an uncontested look. Two early rebounds and two points for the five-star freshman, Charles Bassey. Fouled on the three-pointer by Lamont West, and Jared Savage has a chance at a four-point play. Jared Savage, five for nine outside the arc. You can't go under that screen. You got to get over the top or he is going to make you pay just like that. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Visit Myrtle Beach. Relax and unwind on Myrtle Beach time. Well, we're playing college hoops, but there is college football tomorrow, and we've got two important Week 12 games for you on ABC in the Big 12 at 3.30 Eastern. Will Greer leads the number nine West Virginia Mountaineers against Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Then at 8 Eastern, it's 9-1, and 24th-ranked Cincinnati taking on undefeated 11th-ranked UCF in Orlando. And, of course, College Game Day will be there as well, and you can catch both of those games on the ESPN app. So a big weekend for West Virginia football and basketball. And you could say the same for UCF because oh, the Knights yeah. advanced to the finals of this Myrtle Beach Invitational earlier today. I bet the UCF football fans are already out and ready for game day tomorrow. Here comes a little 1-3-1 one, one trap. Here's Ahmad. And Ahmad got fouled and will go to the line and shoot two. Very active opening minutes for Issa Ahmad. This just looks like a much more focused and connected West Virginia offense compared to the one we saw last night. You know, I, I thought the rhythm of the way they played wasn't good because their defense didn't generate enough. It gives them some momentum. You know, if you can, you're going to put pressure and you're going to play with a lot of pressure. You're going to be up the line and you're going to challenge every pass. But I thought Monmouth did a good job of attacking. And so if you don't generate some turnovers, it sort of doesn't generate the momentum and rhythm you need on the offensive end. Last night, West Virginia shot 26% from three and committed 18 turnovers. They only had 21 made field goals compared to 23 made free throws. The offense looking much more stout tonight against Western Kentucky. Kanate and Bassey really working hard on the inside. Yeah. And, and this is the thing about Western Kentucky. Sometimes they don't look inside at Bassey when he's open. Five on the shot clock. Bassey couldn't control the offensive rebound. Here comes Napper. In transition, no foul called, and it's a turnover. Here's Hollingsworth. Right into the teeth of the defense, and he gets fouled. Tavion Hollingsworth coming up a little bit gingerly on that try. Well, Bob Huggins wants a foul on the other end. I thought Chase Harler gave him on the basketball in a bad position. So Tavion Hollingsworth. Steps to the line to shoot two. Had 23 points, nine rebounds, and three steals in their quarterfinal win against Valpo. He can fill it up with the best of them. You know, both these teams run the middle of the lane, middle lane hard, right, with Bassi and Kanate. But their edge quickness is huge because all their perimeter players can score off the bounce. They can rebound Western Kentucky, I'm talking about. They've got incredible size on the outside to see over the top of the defense. Hollingsworth voted a captain in his freshman year, the first time that's ever happened at Western Kentucky. And that is a rich tradition of basketball going back 100 years. Staying in the 1-3-1, looking to trap. Here's Kanate. That foul's going to go on Jared Savage and Sagabak Kanate instead of 
having a three-point play off a dunk, he's going to have to go to the line and shoot a pair of free throws. He's five for seven this season in the free throw department. Actually, a pretty decent free throw shooter. Last year as a sophomore, 79% from the line. And he's good. First point of the night for the preseason first team all Big 12 member. This is the shot chart for Sagaba Kanate yesterday. He took 11 shots, he made four of them, but I'd like to see a few more circles in blue in the paint tonight to help get him going and then allow him to step outside and knock down triples. He's shown a nice soft touch from out there. And those free throws allow Press Virginia to get set. Hilltoppers handle it. See, I don't like the ball getting stuck right here. You gotta move it, Rich. You know, you gotta look to attack. Just make the defense shift and rotate. Backdoor pass, nice feed. And Charles Bassey will go back to the line. Some good interior passing from Merrick Nelson to the freshman Bassey. You know, Merrick Nelson had the start yesterday, and he's an activity guy. Comes off the bench tonight. He's a great offensive rebounder. He's a terrific dunker and finisher at the rim. So far in the early part of the season, Charles Bassey 10 for 17 from the free throw line. This is his first trip tonight. And he rattles home the first one. And now Logan Rout takes the place of Kanate. And Wesley Harris, 21 in white, takes the place of Lamont West. Seven, three wingspan. This young man just turned 18 a few weeks ago. Just learning how to play the game. He is a terrific prospect. Ahmad. And you see how Ahmad thought better of going up against Bassey. That's the effect a big man can have on you. And Bassey snares another rebound. Savage, nice up fake. Oh, the follow dunk missed by Nelson, but Anderson's there with the follow. I don't think Rick Stansberry minds a quick shot in transition at all because of the way his team can offensive rebound. Western Kentucky the one point lead with 13.45 to go in the first. Harris, jumper, no. Savage the rebound. And there's a foul on Harris to boot. No, it's gonna go on Anderson. Good push and transition. West Virginia not in position to rebound. Terrific job to crash the glass. Just finished talking about what a great finisher Merrick Nelson is around the room. He almost finished that one, but he got the Mountaineers <laughs> looking in his direction right. so his teammate Anderson could follow it up. And now another freshman highly touted for Rick Stansberry. That would be the Canadian-born Delano Banton, number 20, a 6'8 point guard checking into the game. And after a really sharp start, the Mountaineers offense has quieted down a bit. No field goals in the last three and a half minutes. Well, without Sagaba Kanate on the floor, I think you're going to Ahmad here, looking for him to to be the person that gets a bucket for you. Ahmad. There he is. That's a little out of his range. Shooting three is really not what Issa Ahmad does best. Inside, another freshman. This is Tolu Smith. And Smith immediately contributing. West Virginia is not getting back in transition and matching up. And Western Kentucky is looking for early offense. And they've been able to get it. This is a great job by Smith to run to rim side, post up, get to his left hand. Charles Bassey was the known quantity coming out of high school as a freshman. Tolu Smith is the pleasant surprise. He grew six inches from last year, and he has been a very pleasant contributor in the early going for Stansbury. If you haven't seen Western Kentucky play, they're long, they're active. 
extra possessions on the glass. They can shoot it. Savage is terrific outside the arc. We've got depth in the post. They go inside. Kanate is checked back in, loses the handle. There's the 6'8 point guard for you blocking the shot. And here's the freshman Smith goes right at Kanate, but can't get it to drop. Pull up, Napper, got it. Second three of the night for the Mountaineers. We're tied at 14. This game is as close as we anticipated yep. in the early going. Everything contested. Every pos possession matters. You gotta really value the basketball here. It's too slow developing. There's Savage with five on the shot clock. Smith can't follow. I thought Kanate touched that. Ahmad off the feed from Brandon Napper. Anissa Ahmad having himself a good first half. He has eight. West Virginia reclaims the lead. A spot in the finals awaits the winner. Five to shoot for the tops. And again, Kanate wins that battle. They're questioning whether it hit the rim. We've got a stoppage of play, 11 and a half minutes to go. It's been a good first half between the Mountaineers and the Hilltoppers. The bucket falls for Brandon Napper and the Mountaineer faithful love what they're seeing in Myrtle Beach. I'm always thankful in November, but with college basketball serving up Feast Week on November 15th, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my. Tune in to Feast Week, November 15th through the 25th. Well, there is a ton of great basketball across the family of ESPN networks. Just down the road in the Charleston Classic, it has been official. Virginia Tech will take on Purdue in a top 25 matchup for the championship there in Charleston. Syracuse making headlines for all the wrong reasons, going 0-2 at Madison Square Garden, first losing to UConn, then to Oregon. And the Maui Gym Invitational that you just saw about, not only will Jay Billis and Bill Walton be there, <laughs> but great teams as well, featuring Duke, Gonzaga, and Auburn. Here in Myrtle Beach, Rich Hollenberg, Debbie Antonelli, Western Kentucky giving West Virginia all they can handle. It's been a nip and tuck affair so far with 11 and a half to go in the first half. Duke must see TV, right, Rich? I mean, everybody's gonna be tuning in to check out the Blue Devils to see how those freshmen continue to develop. Well, we're gonna be talking about some fabulous freshmen on this court with Paul Biancardi coming up in just a little while. But when you talk about freshmen, everyone is buzzing about Zion Williamson and Cam Reddish and R.J. Barrett and of course Trey Jones as well. And here's the early season schedule, not simple for those youngsters to navigate. Yeah, I hope they get a chance to see if uh, Auburn can take down Xavier and uh, give them a chance to play Duke. Uh, Indiana would be interested. Yeah, in Romeo Langford, Langford, right? Well, both teams are already in the bonus. So we'll be seeing a lot of free throws. And Deb, as you mentioned at the top of the telecast, they're no strangers to the free throw line if you consider what last night's events took place. All right, Western Kentucky shot 33 free throws. West Virginia shot 37. The West Virginia game took two hours and 27 minutes to complete. Not that we were counting. <laughs> Haley good on the first one. Jermaine Haley, a junior transfer from New Mexico State. Another friend from north of the border. He grew up in Vancouver. We talked about a very strong Canadian representation here in Myrtle Beach out of all the teams. Seemingly every Division I program has at least one Canadian player on their team now. Well, I think basketball is growing up there and a lot of college programs want to take their brand up there as well. How about Brandon Knapper getting some early minutes at the point? We haven't even seen Jordan McCabe yet. 
who is a very decorated freshman, signed with Coach Huggins. That's a big question for Bob Huggins. Who will assume the mantle of the next great point guard? Andrew Gordon flushes home his first two, and he is an athletic freak. Yeah. I said yesterday, I hope he's following Sagaba Kanate all around campus, trying to do what he does. Tough pass from Banton off the hands of Bassey and out of bounds. It's an 8-0 Mountaineers run. They're up by four with 10 and a half to go. And just like Western, West Virginia's offense stalled, now the Hilltoppers' offense has slowed down. They've missed eight of their last 10 from the field. See, both teams trying to execute in a quarter court. They're just gonna have to get better at this. Set better screens, better detail. Wes Harris with the drive, but the foul on the floor. That's gonna go on Jared Savage, and with the teams in the bonus, Wes Harris will go to the line and shoot. You know, Rich, you let anybody catch the ball in the pinch, and you get a little bit of space and some isolation, you can't guard it. You just can't guard it. You're gonna end up at the free throw line, or you're gonna get a layup. Harris good on the first one for his first point of the night, extending the Mountaineers' lead to five. Guys are just too good in that area of the floor, giving a little space. Harris goes one for two, and Bassey clears for the Hilltoppers. Here's Hollingsworth, he's been quiet so far. Bassey with the big throw down. Whoa. I think the table's vibrating. Just a taste of what that phenom can do. Impressive. He's got six points in the first half. And see, here's the changing defense. Now they're in a zone. Ahmad turns it over. Bassey leading the break. And he gets it back. And the foul's called. Charles Bassey showing the repertoire. He came to play. And he posterized Andrew Gordon on that one. And so I look at it, okay, two points. Now you sprint back, you set up your 2-3 zone, and what happens? You change your defense, you change the rhythm of West Virginia, you get a steal, and you get an opportunity the other way. And he's already on his way to another double-double. It would be his second this season. There's Eight points, six boards. There's the pitch. He gets lucky high off the glass, but that's the area of the floor I'm talking about. Back-to-back -back baskets are positive offensive plays for Bob Huggins' team. Napper and Haley at the head of Press Virginia. We told you we we're going to talk fabulous freshman Paul Biancardi, ESPN's high school recruiting guru, will be on with us momentarily. Stick around for that. Good hands by Gordon. Gordon been very productive and active on the floor. Good minutes to sub and give Kanate a break. And now Sagaba Kanate back in, as is Jordan McCabe, number five in white, seeing his first action running the point, the player of the year out of Wisconsin coming down to Morgantown. You know, it's interesting that uh, Coach Huggins puts Jordan McCabe in when Rick Stansberry puts Jake Ulmer in the game. Because I'm thinking as soon as Rick Stansberry sees Jordan McCabe on the floor. He's going to post him up. A little bit of a chess match between two veteran head coaches. And Tavion Hollingsworth is going to go to the line after fouls called on West Virginia. Here's a little more on Jordan McCabe. He is a YouTube sensation. He's got 300,000 Instagram followers. Averaged close to 27 and eight a game in his senior year at Kakana, Wisconsin High School. And he won that Mr. Basketball title over some pretty impressive competition. Tyler Hero, who's a blue chipper playing for John Calipari and the Kentucky Wildcats also 
hailing from the state of Wisconsin. Those two very close friends. Hollingsworth got the first. And he's good on the second. All four points for Tavion Hollingsworth coming from the free throw stripe. And once again, it's a one possession ball game with 8.45 to go in the first half. 2-3 zone. They did the right thing, just didn't execute it. Can't turn the ball over like that. Hollingsworth for three. That's off the mark. Murray couldn't get the offensive board. Here comes McKay. He could be a wizard with the basketball. Kanate against Bassey, and he gets it to go. Four points for Sags. Back up to a five-point lead. Counting down to eight minutes to go in the first half. Entertaining basketball from Myrtle Beach. Ten seconds. And a ten-second call. West Virginia may be alive and well. Don't count them dead yet. We'll take a timeout on the floor with another media timeout. And when we come back, we'll hear from Paul Biancardi more on Charles Bassey and what he could bring to the game. Our national recruiting director joins us when we come back. Eight minutes to go in the first half of the second semifinal from the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. It's a five-point lead for the West Virginia Mountaineers. But Charles Bassey has been one of the stars of the first half, the fabulous five-star recruit that Rick Stansbury brought into Western Kentucky. And we are joined now by Paul Biancardi, who is our ESPN National Recruiting Director. And, Paul, you know all about Charles Bassey recruit, uh, talking about Number three out of all big men coming out of high school, what did you see from him coming into college that you thought he would be such a success at the next level? Well, Rich, at 6'10", with a 7'3 wingspan, he uses all that length and athleticism to rebound, to finish, and to block shots. He's a guy who stays in the paint. He's comfortable playing inside. He understands who he is. He's got a little bit of a, a face-up game but he dominates the game at the rim, in the paint. He's going to put up big numbers in Conference USA. Paul, when you look at him and you know he's just turned 18, when you think about what his body is already and what it can become, where do you see his most uh, uh, opportunity to improve? Well, I think, Debbie, it has to be the skill level. He was a little mechanical in high school. You see those broad shoulders. He's got secure hands. He plays best close to the rim. So for Bassey, it's the ability to face up, get a little jump shot, and then get a signature move inside that he can go to. You see him opening the post in this game, but some of his teammates aren't throwing it to him. He's got to learn how to demand the basketball and be a post player. But if he has a great year for Rick Stansberry, Western Kentucky, he's projected right now, late lottery pick, uh, definitely first round. Paulie B, I know you love doing this more than anybody, but give us a comparison <laughs> if you can as to who he projects to play like at the NBA level. Well, he's got a little bit now, don't get too excited, but the Kempe Mutombo style. You know, he loves to block shots and he loves to protect the rim. He's defensive minded. I think about the Kempe Mutombo and I think of Bassey as a poor man's the Kempe Mutombo. Sagaba Kanate in the open court called for the offensive foul and immediately Logan Routh's gonna have to take his place on the floor and speaking of West Virginia Paul we don't want to leave them out of this conversation with you where do you think Bob Huggins club fits in the scope of the Big 12 this season with Kansas as the clear-cut preseason favorite well, I think West Virginia has the ability to challenge this year I think Kansas is still the favorite until somebody knocks him down but this style of play that Bob Huggins does full court 40 minutes He's going to wear people down in the Big 12 tournament. He's going to wear people down in the Big 12 regular season. They're hard to prepare against. No matter what you do in practice, you cannot simulate the pressure, the quickness, and the tenacity that they play with. And, and they, they started this game with a lot of a lot of energy. Debbie talked about the energy. They play with energy. They're hard to beat. Yeah, and they've been no slouch in the recruiting department either. No. Oscar should be away. Wait till he gets to campus next year for Bob Huggins. Number 32 right now in the senior class. This is the hardest playing dude in the class of 2019. 
He's an animal on the offensive glass, and I think the best rebounder in the senior class. Watch when he gets to campus next year for Bob Huggins. He's a, he's a Huggins type of guy because he goes hard and relentless all the time. He is an unbelievable elite rebounder. All right, I know you're a big Jordan McCabe fan as well. Uh, yeah. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Debbie. All right, that's Paul Biancardi, ESPN's national recruiting director, giving us the skinny on Charles Bassey and other players involved in not only this game, but these two programs. Yeah, I, I agree with Paul. I think Bassey's too nice. You know, there's times when when the, when Rick Stansberry's offense is running a four-out, one-in, dribble drive, or a, bear, or a derivative of that, you know, they don't look for him. It's not until they go to sets that they find Charles Bassey, and actually Rick Stansberry sort of mechanically makes them throw the ball inside. Bassey now six points and six rebounds, but he just got whistled for a foul. And that's going to be the first foul on Bassey, so no foul trouble yet for the young big man. It's a five-point West Virginia lead, 24-19. Both offenses starting off clicking on all cylinders. Both defenses have clamped down on those offenses and slowed the pace down a little bit. You know, the, the pace and the precision required in the quarter court right now feels like, you know, NCAA, like March. And a three-second violation called on Bassey. It's going to be a Western Kentucky turnover. Mountaineers basketball. And you almost can pencil in West Virginia for the NCAA tournament. But Western Kentucky had to go to the NIT last year. They made a run got themselves all the way to the semifinals. They pass the eye test right now as an NCAA tournament team. You know, and to take it a step further, you know, the creative scheduling model that they've come up with in Conference USA is really going to help Western Kentucky and teams like Marshall in their league, the two best teams in that league. Pat Adams is going to call the foul on Logan Route 31 and white for West Virginia, and Charles Bassey will go back to the line. This is the demonstrative play on the inside. Bassey just going hard to the glass. That's a loose ball. That's a tough call to go against West Virginia. But you love the activity from the freshman. No fear going up against older, more veteran players. You know, that's the thing. If you're Rick Stansberry, you look at Charles Bassey, you go, look, there's not many guys like Sagaba Kanate that are playing in college D1 basketball. He's finding out really early that this young man wants to compete. And he hasn't backed down one bit about taking on the size and the strength and the experience of Kanate on the inside. And he's showing the touch from the free throw line. He's three for three tonight, seven points, as Jake Omer checks out for Stansbury. And so now the starting five back on the floor for the Hilltoppers. Perfect from the strike, Charles Bassey. Eight points to go along with his six rebounds, and he makes it a one-possession ball game. Deshaun Murray not as intimidating at the top of the 1-3-1. Here's Gordon. That's not his shot. Ahmad, the offensive rebound. Knocked away, Harler picks up the trash. First two of the night for Chase Harler. Up ahead, good catch by Bassey, and he'll go to the line. What a catch. Is he really just 18 Holy years cow. old? He catches this in a crowd. Not shying away from the big moment. You had to wonder how Charles Bassey would perform tonight. Of course, this is a team that went on the road and played at Washington in Seattle. That was a big time environment. This is just his fourth college game. Watch this. That's terrific. Good hands. Big guys have to know where they are on the floor. They have to be cognizant of where the rim is, wherever they get spun around, whether they're back to the basket or whether they're facing up. Deshaun Murray to the bench. Merrick Nelson takes his place on the four. 
for Stansbury. Yeah, I, I think Merrick Nelson is much better at the top of that 1-3-1. One, one. And that's the first miss tonight from the free throw line for Bassey. And I think that's why Rick Stansbury made that substitution, because you get a little bit more bounce at the top, a little more length, a little bit better anticipator on defense. Hilltoppers being very aggressive on the defensive end. Gordon throws it away. Not a lot of patience for Bob Huggins. You commit a turnover, you're coming out of the game. See, and that rebound right there, Bassett needs to go right back up. He didn't need the bounce to collect. Now there's 4.39 to go in the first half. West Virginia clinging to a four-point lead. It's been a good one so far in the Myrtle Beach Invitational semifinal. Great basketball across the ESPN family and networks all over the place, including the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Tomorrow and Sunday, it's going to be 18th ranked Michigan taking on George Washington at noon, then South Carolina and Providence at 2.30 with the championship game on Sunday. And Michigan, of course, making a whole lot of headlines by going up to Villanova and pulling off a major, major road win. This is a good-looking John Beeline team, right? I mean, they can score, they defend. Coming off of playing in the national championship last year. Don't sleep on Frank Martin in South Carolina, though. I'm telling you, that team's going to be good this year. Ten on the shot clock. Now five to shoot. Mountaineers offense stalling out. Ahmad pulls up and can't bail him out. Another rebound for Bassey. That's nine points and eight boards for the freshman in the first half. Cross pass, Savage, open three, got it. Savage was wide open on the skip because Merrick Nelson fought hard on the cut. He drew a lot of attention on that cut. You can't lose Jared Savage on the defensive end. We've got ourselves a one-point game again, counting down to three and a half to go in the first half. Nice steal by Anderson. And he's fouled by Napper, and Josh Anderson will go to the line and have a chance to reclaim the lead for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Don't go anywhere, folks. We got high-level basketball from Myrtle Beach. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Pat Mahomes is going to light this league on fire. Touchdown! They can score on just about anybody. The Rams are making a prime time statement. Showtime. What a matchup in Monday Night Football. That's way far in the future. That's all the way. <laughs> That's Monday night. We could worry about that in a few days. Right now, we are focused on these two heavyweights. Charles Bassey on the left, five-star freshman for Western Kentucky, and the big man from West Virginia, one of the best shot blockers in the nation, Sagaba Kanati, who's been saddled with foul trouble and on the bench. And right now, Josh Anderson has tied this game with a chance to give Western Kentucky the lead with 3.26 to go. Rich Hollenberg, Debbie Antonelli, and the rest of the ESPN crew from the Myrtle Beach Invitational. The winner of this game faces UCF in the championship game on Sunday. Draft the first pass. I think the quarter court defense for Western Kentucky has really kept West Virginia out of rhythm. Wide open, McCabe, and he pays it off. Big shot from the freshman McCabe. Really nice pass across court out of the double team. West Virginia seesaws back on top by two.
They try to make the backdoor pass. Good D by Ahmad. It goes out of bounds, and it'll be Mountaineers basketball. And so Issa Ahmad goes to the line after the Merrick Nelson foul. Good first half for the only senior on Bob Huggins' roster. Issa Ahmad, a 6'8 senior out of Cleveland, averaging 15 and a half in the first two games of the season. Murray has a chance to get in double digits if he can knock down these two free throws. He gets the first to give him nine. Well, having just one senior on your roster is a common theme here in Myrtle Beach. Dion Lavender, the only one for Valpo. Deshaun Murray, who this team is facing, Western Kentucky, the only one, and he's a grad student. More and more than ever, college basketball is a young man's game. Yes, it is. Ten points for Ahmad, four point West Virginia lead. Hollingsworth. It's been a quiet first half for him. Really good job by Harris. Now there's five to shoot. Anderson's going to have to get him going. He takes it himself, left hand, no, and Rout has the rebound. Harler, pull up. Too strong. Rout got it and had it blocked from behind, and then Bassey comes down with the hammer. That's foul number two on Charles Bassey. And Logan Rout will go to the line and shoot a pair. Good push and advance pass by Jordan McCabe to the corner. Harler wide open. And the exchange that Harler and McCabe have at the top of the key right here is McCabe saying, my bad, I threw it too high because it gave the defense enough time on the flight of the ball to get back and contest. Forced Harler to put it down instead of and catch and shoot, it was a one dribble pull up. See, that's one of you know that a young guy is starting to understand the game and no personnel. And I keep going back in my head to the numbers you talked about at the top of this telecast. Attack, attack, attack. Both teams doing a great job getting to the free throw line and converting those free throws. Route makes them both. Well, extra possessions playing a role as well. Offensive rebounding and turnovers. Western Kentucky looking to stop a 7-0 West Virginia run. 10 on the shot clock. Collinsworth wants a screen, he gets it. And he converts. Ooh, big play off the step up screen. That is a veteran play from the sophomore Hollingsworth. Harler at the other end. Another great advance pass by Jordan McCabe. He catches the ball, butt to the sideline, eyes to the rim. Attack, attack. Attack. Counting down to one minute to go in what has been an enthralling first half of basketball for Myrtle Beach. Inside, Smith. He goes down. But they're going to call a foul on West Virginia. And that one's going to go on Issa Ahmad, his second. Good screen and roll right here. Smith just needs to go back up and he loses his footing. I don't know about that. Smith makes the first. Issa Ahmad diplomatically asking Ron Groove for an explanation. I wouldn't call Bob Huggins talking to Pat Adams diplomatic. <laughs> he's at a little bit of a higher volume. Well, he's asking right. for an explanation. Five points for the freshman Smith. Cuts the West Virginia lead to four. Under a minute to go. The winner goes to the finals on Sunday against UCF. Now 10 on the shot clock. McCabe can create for himself if he wants to. Instead, a long three, and it's short. Here comes Hollingsworth on the leap out. 
The crowd wanted a travel, didn't get it. Smith picked up the miss and puts it back. Big bucket for the freshman Tolu Smith. And now it's last shot time for the Mountaineers who lead by two. McCain. Had it stolen by Savage. And that can't please Bob Huggins, but nevertheless, he leads his Mountaineers into halftime with a two-point lead. It's 35-33, West Virginia leading the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in a spirited first half of basketball from the semifinals. We're at halftime of the Myrtle Beach Invitational, the game between the Valparaiso Crusaders and the Monmouth Hawks here at the HTC Center on the campus of Coastal Carolina University in Conway, South Carolina. The 2018 version of the Myrtle Beach Invitational is not yet completely in the books, but they have already announced the field for 2019, and it is an impressive one to say the least. Headlines by the Villanova Wildcats out of the Big East. And yes, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers will be the home team for the 2019 Myrtle Beach Invitational playing on their home floor. And they will be hosting teams like Baylor, Memphis, Middle Tennessee, Mississippi State, Ohio, Utah, and the aforementioned Wildcats of Villanova. That's the 2019 field. We'll be back with second half action between the Crusaders and the Hawks here at the HTC Center. Highlights and the second half on your way after this. We are back at the Myrtle Beach Invitational, part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, Rich Hollenberg, Debbie Antonelli and company. And we have been treated to a dynamite first half of basketball, defensive minded, but high level of basketball between West Virginia and Western Kentucky. The Mountaineers leading the Hilltoppers 35-33. To start the second half, we're gonna bring up the topics that we brought up in the first half. Charles Bassey, Sags Kanate, the two featured big men in this game. Well, we knew they were gonna be the reasons why you wanted to watch. Both teams working hard to establish the other inside the paint. Sagaba Kanate blocking shots on one end, scoring at the rim on the other. And then Charles Bassey, what a terrific job this young guy. 6'11", 7'3", wingspan. Scores on the block, does a great job of getting inside and then check this out. Big time throwdown for Bassey in Western Kentucky. Bassey almost has a double-double already, so he performed well in a first big time matchup against a big time player. Nine points, eight boards for Bassey. Sags Kanate had a great start to the game, but was saddled with two fouls. So Bob Huggins preserving him for the second half. And all that means for us is we're gonna be treated to two <laughs> of the top tier big men in the country, a freshman and a junior in Bassey and Kanate. What do you expect for the second half? Well, in terms of their foul trouble, so both guys have two. So now I'm expecting they're really gonna ramp up their energy level and be a little bit more aggressive, maybe be more willing to take a few more risks. When we look at the winning strategies for Western Kentucky, we talked about their changing defense to keep Western West Virginia off balance. West Virginia shooting 44%. And then attacking on the defensive end, the containment of West Virginia off the bounce. You see Western Kentucky doing a good job getting to the free throw line, taking care of the basketball and being able to get into rhythm. Seven assists on 11 field goals, not turning it over. And then the balance from inside the paint to outside to the three-point line. You see West Virginia shooting a higher percentage on twos than they are on threes in the first half. Well, out of all the players in this game, only one, Issa Ahmad, is in double figures with 10 points. Normally, you would hear that and say, oh, this game must be garbage. Absolutely the opposite. <laughs> Bob Huggins, Rick Stansbury, both of their teams played a high level of basketball in the first 20 minutes. We expect the same as the second half begins. Both coaches deep into their bench. We have a total of 11 players combined with two fouls. Savage. Weak side rebound to Beetle Bolden, who didn't play a lot in the first half. He had two fouls as well. He only played three minutes after picking up those two quick fouls that you referenced. Man-to-man -man defense for Western Kentucky. Here's Bolden looking for Kanate. 
Ahmad wants a screen. And you he see, turned it over. See, he dribbled right into the help. There's no space there to go anywhere off the bounce. Anderson with the big flush. And that's the way to get things rolling in the second half. We might have ourselves an SC top 10 on hand. Off the turnover. Some things need no words. Wow. So a tie ball game off the thunderous dunk by Josh Anderson and back-to-back -back turnovers to start the half for West Virginia. They committed nine of them in the first half. That is the bane of Bob Huggins' existence. Here's Murray. Bolden, good jump stop by Beetle Bolden. And he's got his first two of the second half, five for the game. Numbers in transition, good attack, and it's I'm sure West Virginia is glad Bolden's back on the floor. I thought he had a very emotional, very spirited first three minutes. Savage. Off the window. And you come with a longer closeout because of his three-point shooting ability. And then he has the ability with his length, with a one dribble move, to blow right by to the rim. He and Tavion Hollingsworth are both guys who can score at all three levels. Bolden tries for three. In and out. Bassey, another rebound. That's nine points and nine rebounds now for the five-star freshman. Face-up game, not this time off the window. Coach Huggins calling for motion from his Mountaineers offense. Kanate can shoot that, not this time. Here's Anderson pushing the pace again, but it got altered by Kanate. That ball goes out of bounds. Pat Adams says it was off Bassey, Mountaineers basketball. You know, we haven't talked about Chase Harler very much tonight, but he's played a lot of quality minutes. He was Getting, getting involved inside. Just good hustle right there by Bassey using the ref to cushion him from the table at the end of the court. Here's Harler, turns it over. And Bassey clears for the tops. A good rotation on the back. Bassey, spin move. Too strong. And Kanate snares the rebound. And a couple of veterans exchanging glares and words to Sean Murray and Sagaba Kanate. Those are two guys who feel like every ball should be yeah, their ball. They're two great rebounders. I mean, Deshaun Murray, the transfer from Auburn last year, led Auburn in rebounding. 10 points, seven boards, about three offensive rebounds a game. Even if Bolden caught that basketball and that cut, what would he do with it? You know, like, that's part of the, the growth process for West Virginia, learning to reverse the basketball. Kanate. Well, they might have to take a look at that one yeah. on the monitor. They called a defensive foul, but I thought Kanate had his hands up in the yeah. face area. I'm surprised Rick Stansbury isn't making more of a case. Let's take another look at this right here. This is Anderson. Wow. I would have asked to take a look at that. 
Ends up as an empty possession for West Virginia. Good hands by Harris. And a fight for the loose ball. Harler's got it and puts it in. Chase Harler's just a guy that makes winning plays for West Virginia. And we've got a foul in the open court. And the officials are going to have to be careful because this one is chippy from the outset. We have a timeout on the floor, our first media timeout of the second half. West Virginia clinging to a two-point lead over Western Kentucky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Sports Center tonight with SVP after top ranked boxing on ESPN. He'll have reactions from the Raptors Celtics game, plus Jimmy Butler's Philly debut against the Jazz, and why the Chiefs Rams Monday Night Football Showdown may come down to Todd Gurley and the LA running game. That's Sports Center with SVP after boxing at 1 a.m. Eastern. And the Myrtle Beach Invitational made an appearance on SVP last night. Unfortunately, it was in the bad beat set. <laughs> Back here in the second semifinal, Rich Hollenberg, Deb Antonelli, West Virginia clinging to a two-point lead over Western Kentucky. Savage, tough shot, Ahmad with the rebound. Good oh, defense so by Anderson, sneaking around Kanate to make the steal. That was 100% telegraphed into Kanate. Watch Beetle Bolton right here. He's telling him to post up. You've got to see Josh Anderson hollowing out, getting around the contact. We talked about it last night. A lot of times, Anderson, because he's 6'6", plays defense like a defensive back or a free safety in the NFL. That's what I'm talking about, Rich, about angles and the details in the passing game, right? You've got to be able to enter the pass into Kanate. Bassey, off the mark on the jumper. Kanate, almost beat him down the floor. The ball goes out of bounds and Kanate is perplexed. He felt like he was pushed out of bounds. Instead, it's another West Virginia turnover. That's four turnovers in the first five minutes of the second half. Hilltoppers a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Hollingsworth, and the foul's going to go on Bolden, and that's number three on Beetle. Hollingsworth constantly probing. He's always looking for the gap, trying to get inside. He is a score first, pass second guard. He's got terrific separation skill. You know, his change of pace with the ball, the way he comes off a screen, the way he attacks the screen with the ball in his hands. Broke Courtney Lee's freshman scoring record a year ago. And he's off to a great start in his sophomore campaign as well. First miss from the free throw line for Hollingsworth. As Beetle Bolden now goes to the bench, fouling for the third time. So Brandon Knapper will take over the point guard position. The redshirt freshman as Hollingsworth goes one for two and makes it a one point game. 1-3-1. One, one. And Murray tried to grab it from behind, and Pat Adams gave him the stare like, don't come at me. Yeah, I, I feel like watching Deshaun Murray at the top of that 1-3-1 one, one, that he thinks he has to make a play. But he doesn't have to make a play right there. If he would just funnel into the trap. And see, Merrick Nelson, I believe, is better on the top anyway. You know, I said that in the first half. When Nelson came in, he's longer, he's a little more bouncy. So now mark this time, 14-39. Kanate on the bench with Beetle Bolden. And the first question that comes to mind, Deb, is where's the offense going to come from for West Virginia now? Well, I said Ahmad before, and that's who I believe will have to get some shots right here. He's going to have to work for it, though. Work for the ball. Ahmad had 10 points in the first half. See, that's a pass that he can't catch. Look at Bassey. And he couldn't get it back because Hollingsworth couldn't handle it. But Hollingsworth drops another two. 
That's nine for Tavion Hollingsworth. And Rick Stansbury is upset. He does not want his team to foul. Look at Bassey handling. He gave it to Hollingsworth because he thought he was going to get it back. They stay in this 1-3-1. One, one. When the ball goes below the free throw line, it goes back to the 2-3. Very much like Kermit Davis's defense. He's taking it from Middle Tennessee to Ole Miss. Brandon Napper throws the ball out of bounds. Immediately, Bob Huggins off the bench I'm, looking to his reserves. I'm telling you, Rich, I love the look of this lineup, 1-3-1 one, one, with Merrick Nelson at the top. He can create a lot of vision problems for the smaller guards for West Virginia. Six turnovers in six minutes, and now Jermaine Haley will take over the point guard position. Bassey front ends it, but he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. So Jermaine Haley, a 6'7 junior transfer, will get his attempt at the point guard position. And some high praise for Haley in the offseason. When asked to describe Haley, Bob Huggins reverted to a favorite of his, Deshaun Butler, and said Deshaun Butler wasn't a point guard, but he was able to handle the point guard position. He feels like Jermaine Haley has that kind of potential. Vision, he's got length. Got to believe he's got the right IQ. He certainly is very good on the defensive end. You don't lose anything on that end. Bassey makes them both. That gives him 11 points, and he already has a double-double. I mean, if you're Coach Huggins, I mean, what choice do you have? Jordan McCabe and Brandon Knapper are too small against the 1-3-1. One, one. Bolden is in foul trouble, so you go here with 6-7 at the top. Knocked away. Good defense tonight from Josh Anderson. And another emphatic finish by Anderson. And the Hilltopper faithful are at full throw. Harlan can't silence the crowd. Out of bounds, it'll stay West Virginia basketball as Beetle Bolden is called on again. Revolving point guard, if you will, for West Virginia because the turnovers are getting those kind of plays on the other end. So Bolden's going to have to be careful with three fouls. Lamont West, no. Bolden, no again. And right now, the momentum is squarely in the corner of the team in red. It's a big possession right here. You got to get a stop if you're West Virginia. Momentum totally with Western Kentucky. They're going four, five out, cleared up the lane. This is a dribble drive opportunity. With four on the shot clock. Anderson forced it. No good. Yeah, that's Cannot not the rebound. That's, sorry, Rich. That's not the shot that Rick Stansbury wanted. He opened up the court, wanted somebody to get to the rim. Harler. Spot up three for the junior. Out of West Virginia, Chase Harler with nine. And Rick Stansbury wants to talk it over. And this crowd is all over the officials as we take a timeout for Myrtle Beach. It is an electric atmosphere inside the HPC Center in Myrtle Beach, Carolina, South Carolina. UCF awaits the winner of this semifinal between Western Kentucky and West Virginia. And this game is getting tense, to say the least. You think these teams want it? Well, it definitely matters for Western Kentucky and their resume, right? I mean, you get an early neutral site win, potentially, over a ranked team. Nice touch by Hollingsworth. He's starting to heat up in the second half. 11 for the game for number 11. 
That's a foul. I don't know why Merrick Nelson would reach like that. We have to step away for a quick 30. 11.47 to go. Western Kentucky up four on the Mountaineers. And now for tonight's game track brought to you by Visit Myrtle Beach. And similar to that first game where they lost at home to Buffalo, Deb, West Virginia is getting out mountaineered by the Hilltoppers. Yeah, look at the turnover numbers. They've got 15 points off turnovers, does Western Kentucky. Eleven steals on 17 turnovers. That live ball turnover has resulted in some dunks. A big three by Lamont West. And that's his first three of the game. It's his first basket of the tournament. Freshman Banton on running the point for Rick Stansbury's Hilltoppers. Chris Anderson. Smith is calling for it. Goes to work against the mod. Yeah, absolutely. You get the isolation. You don't bring the one-on-one. -on -one. Or you go, you gotta score in the one-on-one. -on -one. You don't bring any help. Good offense. West tries it again. Different result this time. The ball's out of bounds. Pat Adams right on it. Says it's going to stay with West Virginia. West Virginia's got to work on their spacing in that post up right there, and the high post and the low post together. It's too close. Ahmad threw it away. Hollingsworth at the other end. Blocked by Bolden. How in the world did he get up that high? And a foul on the floor on Western Kentucky. <laughs> I didn't think there was a chance in the world Beetle Bolden had a shot at this. I don't think Hollingsworth saw him. He looks over his left shoulder. He doesn't see anyone. He thinks he's got a clear path. The chant of Beetle in the house. And if there's going to be a spark for this West Virginia team, it would stand to reason that it would come on the defensive end. We've seen a couple of plays where all you could say is, wow, and that was one of them. Well, the officials want to go to the monitor to review. Well, you mentioned this earlier, Deb. This game is being played in the middle of November, but it has an air of March to it. Court shrinks when you get to pressure situations, and the officials are taking a look right here. At... I, I, I don't think Jared Savage has anything to look at right there. That's a that's a foul on Savage, but I, I don't believe he was intentionally trying to, to undercut Kanate. Pat Adams coming over to the table to explain things for us. Right now, it's 10.04 left. A three-point lead by Western Kentucky over West Virginia. It's been a seesaw affair. What did uh, Pat Adams have to say? What did Adams say to us? It's a common foul. They didn't think that uh, Jared Savage was intentionally trying to back into Sagabaugh Kanate, and we didn't either. West, and he got fouled on the jump shot by Jake Omer. 
So Lamont West will go to the line and shoot two. A 6'8 junior out of Cincinnati. Someone who Bob Huggins has implored to try to be more aggressive on the offensive end. I mean, he had 22 in that Buffalo win, or loss, excuse me. Again, the winner awaits the UCF Knights, the number one preseason team in the American Conference. Western Kentucky's number one preseason in Conference USA and West Virginia, number three preseason in the Big 12. Screen, rescreen. Now Smith in the low post, working on Kanate. He falls down, Savage picks it up, and he's short on the jumper. A chance for the Mountaineers to go back on top, down by one, nine and a half to go. Bolden, off the window. He is so tough. He has made a lot of tough plays, winning plays for Bob Huggins. Charles Bassey getting set to re-enter the game. some space for Hollingsworth. 10 on the shot clock, he turns it over. Here's Bolden again in the open court. West for three. Around and out, Banton the rebound. Jump stop. Canate. Too strong. Not sure I like that shot selection. Here's Banton, leaves it off for Smith. And Smith can't convert the bunny at the other end. That has got to be Kanate lurking. Watch this drive right here off the Kanate screen. High off the glass. Terrific finish going left with his left hand. Strong finish. And you look at the look on some of these players' faces. This has the looks of a heavyweight fight. They are going at it. Standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, throwing haymakers. Kanate back to the bench. Bassey on the floor, and Tolu Smith checks out. Clear out. Bolden, jump stop, no. Bassey, another rebound. And here's Banton in the open court. Calls his own number and misses. A couple of ill-advised yeah, shots in the last quick. few possessions. I'd like to see Jared Savage get a touch down on the other end. West. He made his first and he hasn't made one since. Now Charles Bassey has 11 points and 12 rebounds tonight. Josh Anderson, 6'6", being guarded by Beetle Bolden at six feet. 10 on the shot clock. Here's Bassey, two feet in the paint, and he can't get it to go. Anderson. No. Go right back to Bassey. Give him a chance to repost. He had a terrific duck in on route. Stolen away by Anderson. Another dunk show from number four. His third highlight reel dunk of the game. And that puts the Hilltoppers back on top by one. You can see why Rick Stansbury calls Josh Anderson the most athletic player on his roster. Eight, 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 eight. 
6.21 to go. It's a one-point Western Kentucky lead. And why are they on top? Because Josh Anderson goes up top for another breakaway dunk and another highlight reel. Well, the Myrtle Beach Invitational has a day off on Saturday, but College Hoops never sleeps this time of year. Stay tuned for the Mohegan Sun Arena, Uncasville, Connecticut, hosting the Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off, where it'll be 18th ranked Michigan and George Washington, and South Carolina taking on Providence for a shot in the championship game on Sunday. Rich Hollenberg, Debbie Antonelli, the rest of the ESPN crew. Feast Week presented by Lowe's, we are in Conway, South Carolina, and this has been one whale of a basketball game. Two heavyweights throwing haymakers, and right now we are tied at 50 after that Lamont West free throw. Well, Western Kentucky with three players with four fouls. Jared Savage, Deshaun Murray, and Merrick Nelson. So deep into the bench has Rick Stansberry gone. Issa Ma checks back in for Bob Huggins. Ben's got to get some quality minutes right here, the freshman at 6'8". This one's been close from the opening tip. Four ties, nine lead changes. And we're counting down to six minutes to go. Go to their horn series. They're going to look for Bassey on this when they go to the sets. Aaron pass by Anderson, almost picked off by Harris. And we haven't seen the horn series yet when we put the two bigs on the elbow, two shooters in the corner. So Jared Savage stays on the floor with four fouls. And now Western Kentucky's gonna have to get into his offense quickly. Eight on the shot clock. Kanate all the way out and picks it off himself. Here's Harris, lost it. Bassey. Wisely gives it up to Savage. I love the way West Virginia double teamed the horns on the, on the ball coming off that screen at the elbow. But another turnover. I don't know what Hollingsworth was trying to do right there, but. And I think they overturned that. I think they're saying it is going to be Western Kentucky basketball. Yeah, there is a conf looks like there was some confusion by Western Kentucky. And now Ron Groover telling the West Virginia bench to settle down, and that gets the West Virginia faithful in an uproar. Here's Hollingsworth. That's an offensive foul called on Charles Bassey. That's three on Bassey. So West Virginia will have the ball up one, 5.39 to go. Try to get Kanate on the block on an up screen. They come with the double team. Kanate misses, and Ahmad can't follow. They have not been bringing the double team at all to the Kanate matchup on the inside. Anderson takes it himself and gets fouled. This game has settled into where we expected it would be, a defensive standoff. Yeah, it's punch, counterpunch. I mean, foul trouble mounting up on both sides. Josh Anderson has had a huge second half. Three monster breakaway dunks. And remember, Western Kentucky's doing all this without their point guard from last year, Lamonte Bearden who's academically ineligible the first semester and will miss the first nine games. And so Anderson has been very serviceable at the point for Rick Stansberry. He 
He knocked down the first to tie it. The second gives Western Kentucky the lead. That's the 10th lead change of the game. And we have five minutes remaining with one spot in the title game on the line. Run a little floppy right here, and then they're looking for a pin down. Floppy again. Kanate thought about it and missed it. And Bob Huggins told us Sagaba Kanate worked so hard on extending his range in the offseason after flirting with entering his name in the NBA draft, but he cautioned us. He said, we just can't have him fall in love with the shot. If he was a three-point shooter and you hesitate like that, that's one thing, but he's not considered a three-point shooter yet. He's made a few threes. It's a big difference. Now Western Kentucky brings it up with the lead by one. Hollingsworth, no on the pull-up, Bassey over. gets his hands over the rim and puts it back. Over the rim, Rich, and over Kanate. That's 13 points and 14 rebounds for Charles Bassey, who has not disappointed. Make it 15 rebounds for Bassey. Well, they run the Iverson cut for the isolation. And then you throw the ball away after you do such a good job of defending. We don't need home run right now. We need singles. Josh Anderson giveth, and Josh Anderson taketh away. We're coming down to the final minutes in this one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Visit Myrtle Beach. Relax and unwind on Myrtle Beach time. Let's revisit the story that we talked about at the top of this telecast, Debbie Antonelli, the two big men in the spotlight, Charles Bassey and Sags Kanate. Well, Bassey with a double-double with 15 rebounds on the inside, and Kanate, you see that one for six. He's one for three inside the paint, and he's 0 for three outside the arc. He's got one basket in the game and a couple of free throws. And Deshaun Murray trapping in the half court, forced the turnover. See, he didn't have to go for the steal. He just had to funnel the ball handler into the trap. And that is turnover number 21 for the Mountaineers. You don't have to look much farther if they end up losing this game as to the culprit. Three and a half minutes left. Here's Murray working on Harris. Spin move, no, good hustle by Murray recovering. And wow. Deshaun Murray wow. around the line, that was a veteran move by Deshaun Murray. And not only that, I'm gonna give this a little shout out to Rick Stansberry over there for calling his number. He calls for the ISO clear out. So he gets the ball to Murray inside and he collects his own miss. That is a relentless winning play by Deshaun Murray on the baseline. And he pays it off with a free throw, his first point of the night. Now you see the detail and you get deeper into the playbook here. You know, both coaches, we've seen Coach Huggins go with some Iverson cut and some action on the floppy down here. Getting more movement out of his offense. And now you see Charles Bassey last time out of horns. Now you get Deshaun on a ISO post up. Bolden. It's out of bounds and it's gonna be Hilltoppers basketball with three minutes and three seconds remaining. West Virginia has missed eight in a row and nine of their last 10 from the field. Well, they've gotta get something off their defense here. You know, they're struggling to score offensively. See if they can get something off their D. They need a couple stops in a row. Hollingsworth. That would have been a dagger three, but he gets it back. And he's fouled by Bolden. 
That'll be foul number four on Beetle Bolden. I think Coach Huggins got to leave him in. You know, it'd be interesting to see if he makes the choice to take him out. He's his most veteran guard on the floor. With 241, you got to leave him. Hollingsworth. Especially when they're an offensive possession coming up. Tavion Hollingsworth has 12. Remember, West Virginia went from 13 in the AP poll to falling out after an overtime loss to Buffalo at home. And they're still number 13 in the coaches poll. And with 2.40 to go, Western Kentucky has its largest lead of the game at six. Bob Huggins uses one of his timeouts to talk it over with 2.36 left. Well, offense has been really difficult to come by for West Virginia, not only today, but in their first three games of the season. So what do you think Bob Huggins is telling his team right now? Well, I, I think his team is starting to feel the effects even more and more as we get deeper to the loss of Javon Carter, not just on the defensive end, but graduating Dax Miles as well. You don't have a fluid offensive system right now. You know, Kanate is in between, outside the arc, inside. You don't have Lamont West playing at his best, highest level. Bolden at the point guard trying to figure out between Napper and McCabe how to divvy up the minutes there. And a lot of times tonight, the ball gets stuck. There's no reversal. And if Kanate will go to the block and post up, throw it in there and let him go to work and see if he can get to the free throw line. Because what you want to do now is try to get to the line and not have time go on. So I'm looking for a long answer, Rich. I want Sagabar Kanate to have the basketball on the block on this possession. Western Kentucky in the midst of a 7-0 run the last two and a half minutes. West Virginia has missed their last nine field goals. And you saw in those huddles, both head coaches extremely animated in their huddles. I've never liked that pass, and I certainly don't like it when you're being defended. Throwing it away from the D like that. What a play by Hollingsworth. And that turnover was number 22 in the game for the West Virginia Mountaineers, and it's been something that has been biting them all season long. They came into this game, granted it's only two games before this, but they came into this game averaging eight and a half, 18 and a half turnovers a game. That's way too many for Bob Huggins like. And out of those 22 turnovers, Western Kentucky has cashed in on 18 points. And a lot of dunks which really generates incredible confidence in your team. How about Josh Anderson? What a terrific job up the line, an easy one. Makes usually, it look spectacular. Usually, Deb, it's West Virginia that's using their defense to create offense. Today, they've been outdone by Western Kentucky in that department. Harler at the point. Bolden for three. Huge three for Beetle Bolden to bring West Virginia to within three. As we count down to two minutes to play in this semifinal at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Anderson blocked by Kanate. And that's West Virginia basketball. There you go. Speed him up. Not a good decision by Anderson right here. Out of control, off balance. Kanate at the rim says no. And I think if Anderson would have left it off for Bassey, he would have had an easy two-hand dunk. Instead, it's West Virginia basketball. A chance to tie with a triple. And Deshaun Murray with a big block with four personal fouls. 16 on the shot clock. If Bolden's taking the ball out of bounds, look for him to get it right back. 
West Virginia has one timeout remaining. Western Kentucky, two. Inside, Ahmad blocked by Bassey. Blocked again, but they're going to call goaltender. Wow. Look how quick Bassey is off his feet. Gets the first one. He has impressed oh, in no, this that, semifinal. You think that ball was on the way down? And Rick Stansbury uses his one of his final two timeouts remaining. Both teams with one timeout left. Possession arrow is in favor of the Mountaineers. And both teams are in the bonus. Why are these two teams playing so hard? Because a trip to the championship is on the line. UCF awaits Johnny Dawkins, the head coach of the Knights. They got past St. Joseph's in a big way, 77-57. One of the better defensive teams in the nation is standing by to see who they will play in Sunday's title game. B.J. Taylor, the point guard for UCF, preseason pick for the American Conference Player of the Year. And then you've got seven foot six taco fall on the inside to have to deal with. That's right, I said seven feet, six inches. Tallest player in college basketball, one of the 40 tallest humans that's walking the face of the earth right now. So defense has been a common theme in Myrtle Beach. One of these teams gonna have to deal with this. Taco Fall, he doesn't hardly even have to jump. It's literally a drop in the bucket and he works hard for position. And Johnny Dawkins does a terrific job of getting him in an ISO on the block so that he can score, but he definitely demands a double and it's really tough to keep him from going where he wants to go. And the toughest thing about facing UCF, and we've seen them now for two days in a row, it's almost like you have to game plan for two teams, one with Taco Fall on the court and one without. Yeah, Colin Smith comes in off the bench and he's got a high motor. They're a fun team to watch. Savage inbounds to Hollingsworth. Harler went head over heels, and Murray got fouled from behind and will go to the line. That's the third foul on Wesley Harris, as Deshaun Murray, the graduate transfer from Auburn. Two key free throws here with a buck 27 left, and he misses the first one. Capacity crowd on hand inside the HTC Center in Conway, South Carolina, and they've been treated to a thriller in this semifinal. Bassey's gonna pick up that foul on the free throw line. And that's a teachable moment for Rick Stansbury talking to his five-star recruit. But with a buck 26 left, he'll stay on the floor with those four fouls. Well, he's got to learn, too. I mean, you're in the bonus. It's going to put Kanate on the free throw line. Sagabak Kanate has been limited offensively in this game. Just four points all coming in the first half. And he short arms the free throw. It's a double bonus or else that could have been a one and one That could have been a big deal for Western Kentucky. Kanate, usually a reliable free throw shooter. And Hollinsworth has got to make a good decision with the basketball here when he gets it in his hands. Five for Kanate, tie game. 57 all with a buck 20 left. Rick Stansbury doesn't want to call timeout here. Both teams with one timeout remaining. A lot of offensive options for Rick Stansbury. West Virginia showing zone. Inside, Murray with the throwdown. A thunderous dunk by Deshaun Murray. No pressure on the ball, a direct line pass to the block. 
Well, they called Deshaun Murray a little Charles Barkley because of what he did last season at Auburn. And he showed it right now for Western Kentucky. Miscommunication in the defense. Attack, attack, attack. We talked about it at the top of this telecast, Deb. And that is exactly what Western Kentucky continues to do despite the nail biter they're in. Extra possessions, whose DNA and ability to attack would be able to make a fa uh, uh, be a factor in the game. So Rick Stansbury is out of timeouts. Bob Huggins has one remaining with one minute and one second left. And the Hilltoppers now up by two. So the last time West Virginia had a chance to run a set. They put Harler at the point and they let Bolden run off a screening action. Kanate hit him in the corner. Arkansas Little Rock and Nevada has started on ESPN News. If you're tuning in for that one, stick around with us and watch the finale. It won't disappoint. And then Arkansas Little Rock and Nevada will be immediately following this game. Under in, a minute to go. Stay in a 1-3-1, one, one, fall back into a 2-3 once the ball goes below the free throw line. Mountaineers have struggled with this defense. Bolden turns it over. And here's Savage at the other end. Locked by West, and they call a foul that will send Western Kentucky to the free throw line. That 1-3-1 one, one has been trouble for West Virginia. Another transition opportunity off a live ball turnover in a late game situation. This has been an uncharacteristically low scoring basketball game for people who watch Western Kentucky hoops. They average about 74, 75 points a game. Today they've been limited right now just 60. That's a credit to the West Virginia defense. One, three, one coming again for Western Kentucky. And Let's Savage see. makes them both. Let's see if Bolton can pull the trigger on a quick three. 30 seconds left, West Virginia down by four. They're in their man. Here's Bolton for three. Close, but out. And the foul immediately by Kanate. And Western Kentucky can smell a victory. They're dressed in red behind the Western Kentucky bench, and they are going nuts. So Deshaun Murray will go to the free throw line, possibly try to ice this game away. Yeah, because he missed the last two free throws last time he was at the line, so this game's not over. West Virginia in danger of falling to one and two on the season. Murray misses the front end of the one and one. Bolden's gonna have to hustle. Ahmad for three. It's off the mark. Murray skies for the rebound and the foul is called immediately. Well, Murray can get up, can he? Wow. The turnovers in the live ball situation. The 1-3-1 defense by Western Kentucky. The play of Charles Bassey on the inside, dominating on both ends. Well, Western Kentucky does not play in a Power 5 conference it's in Conference USA, but they look like a Power Conference team. Beetle Bolden is fouled out. Deshaun Murray at the line. Three-point shooters on the floor for Bob Huggins. You're gonna have to get a three. And now the lead is five for the Hilltoppers with 12.4 left. Murray cans them both, and it's academic at this point. Yep. It'll be Western Kentucky, preseason number one in Conference USA facing UCF preseason number one in the American Conference 
for all the marbles here in Myrtle Beach. Credit to Hilltoppers. They took every punch that West Virginia can throw and they threw one more themselves. The Hilltoppers pull off the upset and they advance to the championship round on Sunday of the Myrtle Beach Invitational where they will face the UCF Knights for the Myrtle Beach Invitational Championship. That'll be seen on 6.30 on ESPN2 on Sunday. Your final from the Conway South Carolina HTC Center. Western Kentucky wins it 63-57 over West Virginia. For Debbie Antonelli, I'm Rich Hollenberg saying so long for Myrtle Beach. Now let's send you to Reno, Nevada for Little Rock and Nevada.